So hello and welcome to this video. How do you create digital timing diagrams like the ones you can see here in my browser window? Are you using GIMP, Inkscape, LibreOffice Draw or LaTeX? Personally I have used LaTeX with ticks to create my digital timing diagrams but a few days ago I find a software which makes the drawing of digital timing diagrams really easy. So let me introduce WaveDrum to you. WaveDrum is a free and open source program which offers um, an online and an offline editor um, for editing digital timing diagrams. And if you click here on the link editor on the project's website, um, this editor should open. And you can just type in the commands here WaveDrum uses a JSON object notation and draw your timing diagrams. But if you are not online, you can also download an, uh, the editor as an application. But the download is quite big, it's about 100 megabytes. And if you like something which is more lightweight, which I would prefer, you need an alternative an alternative, and I found an alternative. So here is a Python module called WaveDrum Pi, which is the translation of WaveDrum from JavaScript to Python. And you can create digital timing diagrams by writing a Python script, putting the um, digital timing diagrams description in it, and then run the Python script. Um, to install it, all you have to do is run this command pip install wavedrum. This will install the Python module to you. And if you scroll down here, you can find an example how to build this um, this digital timing diagram by using the Python module. And all I, I have done is I just took this code here and copied it into my editor. So. Up here we will we import the module WaveDrum. Down here we create an object of the class WaveDrum render. And in the constructor of the class we put in the JSON um, object description for our timing diagrams. And down here we save our object to a S4G file. Here I called it demo2.s4g. Um, to run the script, all you have to do is type python timing1.py or python filename.py, but I use women I want to um, bind it to an hot key and also open up an image viewer. So all. So I've created this script, this special script here, buildpick.sh, and the script will delete my last build of the file, then it will run our Python script and then it will kill and reopen my image viewer to reload the image because my image viewer don't have auto reload. Okay, so now let's begin with a little um, example. So let's imagine we have an um, XOR gate here with two inputs and we want to um, draw the timing diagram of it. So we have here input 1, input 2 and the output. Okay, so the input 1 is low for one clock cycle, high for another, no clock cycle, for a time slot. Then it became low and here it will become high impedance. Our input 2 is low for 2 time slots, high for 2 time slots, then low and then high impedance 2. And our output, I think you all know how XOR gate works. If not, if both signals are the same, it will output a 0. If they differ, it will output a 1. So it is low for the first time slot, then 2 time slots high and then low. And here we don't know how our X or gate will behave, so I will type it as X or undefined here. Ah. 
Okay, I have to add you. Sorry, this is wrong. Here, of course, it is low, and then here it is undefined. So let's draw this here. So this is a JSON like um, object notation. The first attribute is the name of our signal, which is input one. Then we can specify um, how it should look. And if the signal is low for a time slot, we just type low or L, capital L, uh, lower, lower case L, H for high, L for low, H for high, L for for low and set for high impedance. Now let's copy this two times here uh, and okay looks better. Then here we have input 2 Q. So our um, our Input 2 is low for two cycles, and if the signal don't change, we can just type a point here, set it as high for two cycles, and then low and then high impedance. And our output is low, high for two cycles, and low for two cycles, and then undefined, which you can type an X for. Um, I have mapped two key binds. Mm. I've mapped um, two key binds to run my build script. So all I have to do is type my key bind here and it should yeah, create our um, timing diagram here. It looks good. But maybe you want to have a headline and um, want to number the ticks of the clock. This is also possible. All you have to do is add head here. Okay, um, let's start with some text. Signaling of uh, XOR gate. Okay, let's try if this works. Yes, and now let's add the ticks by typing tick. And we want to start at 0 or at 1 as we desire. And then we have our the numbers of our on our time slots here. Okay, so that's a first quick example, but I want to show you a little bit more. So I have a second example. I want to create a 4-bit counter. So this 4-bit counter has, of course, four output pins, which indicates the current um, counter state. It has a clock um, input, so our input pin is only latched in on a rising edge of the clock. We have a reset pin, which is which is um, low active, so if the pin here is low, our output will be reset to zero. And we have a overflow output two. So if we count up to 15 and then it will the counter will get the signal to count up one more time and then our output will become zero and the overflow bit will be asserted for one clock cycle so let's try to implement this time diagram here so our first um, signal is our clock then we have our reset pin, our input, I will put the four outputs together in one signal and inside the signal we will write the state of the outputs. So for example, it will look like this here. We have a zero, for example, and here a one, because this, this is more easier than um, creating four output pins. And our last pin is our overflow. Uh, 
Okay, I have made a little mistake here. Okay. Um, this is, um, it's very strict about um, about the JSON notation. So here, there are no commas allowed if there is if or if something is the last um, last argument of a list in in um, curly braces. There, it isn't allowed that at the end is it there is a comma. So now we should be able, yes, to build it. Okay. So let's start with the clock. And then to make a clock with wave drum, we ha just have to type a capital P or a lowercase p. And I will show you the difference in just a second. Here we go. Um, with a capital P, there will be this little arrow, and without there won't, there won't be an arrow. And if you want a clock which will start with a negative edge, you can use a, a lowercase or a capital or a uppercase um, N. Okay, so this gives you a falling uh, clock, a falling edge clock. Okay. But we will go with the, a rising edge clock here. And, may, and here, one time slot is one clock period. If you want uh, one clock period to last two or more clock cycles, all you have to do is add a, the attribute period here and set it to two. So now one clock cycles are two time slots, but we will go with one with a one time slot clock period. So at first our reset is low, then the reset should become high and will stay high for some ticks. And let me just adjust um, this here so it's a little bit more easier for us to follow our signals. Okay, so this should work. Then our input pin. If the reset is low, our input pin is a don't care. Whatever state our input pin has, our output will be zero. Then it is low for one cycle, became high, and then low, and then high, and then it will stay high for some cycles. Okay, so now let's start with our output pin. When the reset is asserted, um, our output is zero. And I will type a three, I will show you what the three means in just a second. Okay, then in the next steps, uh, um, input is low, so it will stay zero. With, with a high here, it will change to one and stay one because the input is low here, and then it will change on every edge of the clock. And we can put, so let's build it. And now here we can see um, the three and the two just make this crossing thing here, this fields here. And if we want to have some, if we want to write something inside the fields, we can use the data attribute. It, uh, and we want to write a zero in the first, then a one and a two. And now we have these numbers inside these fields. So now we can could do this for 16 time slots, but we can um, add a break sign here. And go on with with 14, 15, 0, 1. Oh, 
Okay, I made a little mistake. Ah, yeah, of course. Okay, now I should be able to compile it. Okay, and here I will add some break lines. Okay. Okay, so with this character we can add a break line here. Okay, and let's say here our reset will be low again and our output will be resetted to zero. Low. Then our input is I don't care. And let's give the zeros a little color so we can see it better. If you want to use another color, you can use um, four, for example. We'll give it another color. Zero. Okay, and now the last thing we have to take care of is our overflow output. Here it should be high for one time slot. So let's change it here to high and then send to low. Okay, but now our overflow um, output is high before our output um, is set to zero. So let's add a little phase shift here. We can do this with the attribute phase. And I will shift it by minus 0 0.2 time slots. And now, yes, now our overflow is more aligned to our output. So I think with by using WaveDrome you can really easy, um, you can build time diagrams really easily. It's much quicker than doing everything with ticks. So I've hoped you've learned something. If you want to see more examples on the WaveDrome website, under the section Tutorials, you can find um, about 10 to 12 different examples what you can do with WaveDrome. So I hope you found this interesting. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.